Have you put any thought into your DNS server recently? If you haven't, then it's possible that your ISP and anybody else who can snoop on your internet connection is aware of all of your DNS queries, which essentially means that they know every single website that you are going to. There are solutions to this, but you just have to configure them. You see, typically on your system's network settings, whether you're using Windows or Linux, your DNS server will be configured as an automatic use, or it might be configured like this in Linux to use an address in the 127 range, which is a loopback address. And all you need to know without making things too complicated is that this 127 range address means that this computer is going to use whatever DNS settings are configured on your router, which is the same exact thing that the blank settings here in Windows means. And your router is most likely configured to pull a DNS server to use from your ISP because more than likely your ISP configured your router or really in a lot of routers, that's just how they're set up is to pull the uh, DNS server from your ISP. And this is where the root of the problem lies. You see, your ISP does not use encrypted DNS servers. At least in America, I have yet to find an ISP that use encrypted DNS servers or QNA minimization by default. And QNA minimization, by the way, is this method of making DNS queries in such a way that instead of sending our entire URL query to each domain level when we have a multi-domain URL, instead of sending it to each domain level to resolve the URL, we only send each one the minimum amount of data that they need to actually figure out what this URL is. So to understand how this works, let me just give you a quick breakdown on how DNS name resolution would work with this example, uh, multi-domain URL. So this link that we have here is deutschdrawings.tumblr.com.de. That's a mouthful. And just like how it's quite a bit for us to say, it's quite a bit for single DNS servers to deal with. So when your computer makes a request to this website, it first asks the DNS route, where is .de? So this would route us to the German servers. And if this site only ended in .de, we wouldn't have to go any further because the German top level domain .de can resolve all .de domains. But since we also have this .com, the .de server has to ask the .com top-level domain, which contains Tumblr. And then Tumblr contains this non-existent uh, blog within their domain. So without QNA minimization, each one of these servers will be queried for the full domain name, which obviously isn't very good for privacy because all of these top level domains log your data. So the German government will have a record of this domain that you tried to access. The ICANN will have a record of it. And of course, Tumblr will have a record because you're using their service. There's nothing that you can really do about that even with this querying method. But with QNA minimization, we don't need to query the first two top level domains for the full URL. We only have to ask the root for .de and we only have to ask .de for .com.de and we only have to ask .com for Tumblr. And then from there, Tumblr serves us our page. And that way, these servers, they only know the minimum amount of information they need to know. They don't need to know uh, this part here in black, the deutschdrawings.tumblr. They only really need to know that you're asking for .de or uh, the .com. So in order to have this feature enabled, we need to first use an encrypted DNS server on our device that supports QNA minimization instead of the default one. So you could do something as simple as specify the IP of a server that you want to use uh, right in here. 
a lot of the time that is supported. And if you aren't sure of which IP to use, which server to use, then I suggest going to the DNS page on privacytools.io. Um, this way you can look through a bunch of different DNS providers and then you can see uh, the type of logging that they do, what type of company they are, uh, different protocols that they support. And they also have um, these little uh, notifications here for certain services that you might want to avoid or just be aware of certain things that they do that might otherwise be difficult to find out about these companies. But most of them do have QNA minimization. Most of them do provide uh, DNS security. Most of them claim to do very little or no logging. Uh, so once you have that set up to then enable our encrypted DNS, you, again, could try using the servers in here, but certain ones are not going to work this way alone on Linux. You may need to use an additional program uh, called Stubby. And with Stubby, you can install it from your software manager if you don't feel comfortable using the terminal, or you could just install it with sudo apt install Stubby on Debian based systems, uh, which really you should get comfortable with using the terminal if you're going to use Linux. And then to configure the, um, to configure Stubby, we want to then vim into this file here with an etsy stubby stubby.yml and of course make sure that you do it as root um, or use root with any other text editor so that you can actually save your edits and then we want to go to the line with the string round robin upstreams and then um, you can either comment this out because uh, this is how it'll be by default, or you could just change it to be zero. And then you want to paste in the DNS server that you want to use. And you could only use one if you want, or if the DNS provider you choose only offers one server for you to use. Currently, I'm going to be using NextDNS. So with this, uh, right now, I just have the um i think this is the server that does dns over https they support i think four in total so you could have uh, all four of them put in here and i guess i'll go ahead and show you guys how that would look it's not really any different than this so if we head on over to next dns's setup page it shows you all the different ways to configure it because there are programs other than Stubby that you could use. Like you can use DNS Mask, for example, DNS Crypt. Um, but you see here, these are the lines that you would put in. So let's show you how the pattern is set up here. So you can see that this is just one line with the address data, and then you put the IP address. Um, or you would put the IPv6 abbreviated address if you wanted to use the IPv6 ones. And then below it, you just put the TLS authorization name. So pretty simple, not too complicated. Uh, and then you want to write your changes to this file here. Oh, and there's actually one other thing that I forgot to mention. Um, so, you want to also take note of this listen address. So by default, the listen address is going to be that loopback, right? 127.0.0.1. You have to then go back over to your network settings and make sure that that is listed as your DNS server. Because if you don't have this here, then it's not actually going to proxy over to this address here and use the encrypted DNS setting. So make sure you set that up. Then once all that is set up, um, you can write quit before. I mean, they're, they're two different programs. So, uh, you know, take care of that. And then you can test to see if you have the QName minimization enabled by running this command here. So this is going to do a dig on this um, multi... Uh, you see it's a multi-domain URL. 
and then it'll just give you this output here. Hooray, your QNA minimization is enabled on your resolver. So we got that part figured out. And then to test our encryption, we can check it against Cloudflare's encrypted DNS checker. So we'll go over to that. This is the URL right up here. And I'll be sure to leave this inside of the description as well as the commands that you need to run. All that good stuff as always. So then click on check my browser. And wow, that actually ran pretty fast. Um, so you can see here that we got DNSSEC. We're using the latest version of TLS 1.3. Uh, we also have the encrypted SNI. Now with secure DNS, uh, this isn't going to be checked unless you're actually using 1.1.1.1 as your DNS server configured in here or configured in Stubby if you're gonna use that instead. And I really don't recommend using that because this DNS server is actually owned by Cloudflare. And the concerning thing about Cloudflare is that their content delivery network is quite large. And if Cloudflare, if Cloudflare ever decides to stop serving a website like they did with 8chan and the Daily Stormer, then that website will effectively be taken down. Now, maybe you don't agree with the messages of those sites, but if you look into the full thread of why Cloudflare stopped supporting those sites, they were basically pressured into doing it by the ADL and the SPLC, both of which are essentially anti-free speech organizations that are disguised as anti-hate organizations so that they can get support for normies, from normies and continue to try and dominate the free market of ideas. You see, the internet itself is built upon free speech. It's the foundation. And if you remove that foundation from this structure, it's going to become something that you don't want to live in, which is part of the reason why I advocate for free and open source software and decentralized computing, because if we allow small groups of people to have a monopoly on control and power, then they're going to abuse that control. They're going to abuse that power. But enough about politics. As you can see here, my DNS is encrypted. The, um, the settings here might not be set, this encrypted SNI, because this is more of a browser dependent thing. I don't think that Chrome-based browsers even support encrypted SNI. Uh, but Firefox does. And there's another video that I'm going to make about Firefox, so I'll probably just cover how to configure this in that video. But that's it for this one, guys. I hope that it was helpful. If it was, be sure to share the video so that you can help others. Leave a like, subscribe, and tick the notification bell. Peace out.